most of you would have heard the term spondylosis so it's it's one of the term that pops up right on our radar whenever we have any kind of a neck pain or a back pain in an elder adult or an elderly population so so strictly speaking spondylosis is a very broad term it is not like just one disease or one diagnosis so spondylosis basically refers to a series or a combination of changes that happens in our spine as we age so these changes can happen in the bone this can happen in the disc it can happen in the joints between the two bones so as a result of all these changes so naturally you know the entire term the entire gamut comes under the term cervical spondylosis so it is not just one disease but it's a disorder which come con con which consists of several uh, individual diseases so what uh, what are the patterns or what do patients with cervical spondylosis have so basically as i already told the most common symptom that the, anybody presents in the cervical spondylosis is a neck pain and it can be of a varying severity or a varying pattern so it can be continuous in some cases it can be intermittent only on and off so only once in a week or once in a month sometimes you know people have this neck pain and virtually with some kind of a physiotherapy or just popping a pill and the neck pain completely disappears in several cases so this is one of the commonest patterns of presentation but this is easily manageable as well but the other two patterns so the second pattern that you know the patients can present with is a combination of neck pain and also a sy symptom related to nerve involvement so when we say nerve involvement is that these changes that i described earlier the spondylosis changes sometimes can cause some compression or impingement on the nerve root that comes to the arm or the hand so in these cases pain usually travels along the distribution of the nerve and then it causes an arm pain or a hand pain which can also be associated in some cases with some numbness and in severe cases with weakness of the hands or weakness of the arm or the shoulder or whichever particular nerve is getting involved so these are more severe cases which require more ur urgent intervention in in particular in some of these cases so this is the second pattern the third pattern is even more serious so because this involves the main nerve that is the spinal cord so as you know the spinal cord is the one that transmits the nerves all the way from our brain to the hands and to the legs so when this changes that is the cervical spondylosis changes affects and causes compression on the spinal cord which can be even at one level or at multiple levels so this results in spinal cord dysfunction so in these cases patients usually have a lot of other symptoms as well like difficulty in walking numbness or weakness involving the hands and the legs stiffness in the hand, hands or the legs which uh, you know we call it as a myelopathic features so these are usually progressive and once these kind of changes or once ca these kind of spinal cord dysfunction happens so these are sometimes irreversible and again they should be prevented in in many cases as well so what are the treatment options for cervical spondylosis so as as mentioned majority of the cervical spondylosis present only with neck pain and they do not require any kind of an intervention so many times they just require regular physiotherapy and that is one of the most important as well as the most neglected thing that usually patients with cervical spondylosis do so regular physiotherapy that is morning and evening just 5 to 10 minutes of neck exercises that are taught by a physiotherapist can go a long way in preventing these recurring episodes of neck pain or neck stiffness and can also decrease the incidence of nerve involvement or spinal cord involvement in many of these cases but yes some these are age related changes and as the age progresses the symptoms or the disease also will progress so in advanced cases whenever there is a you know nerve involvement whenever there is a weakness or a numbness or a difficulty in walking so these are the usually cases where you know surgical intervention will be required and there are various types of surgical intervention that can be done either through a conventional open surgery or through a minimally invasive spine surgery which is more beneficial in terms of you know faster recovery and you know lesser blood loss and you know quicker return to work and all those things but it can also be done you know using an approach that is in the from the front or also from an approach that is from the back of the neck as the individual case uh, demands so these decisions are usually more complex not within the purview of this talk and these are the decisions that will be taken by uh, the treating doctor or a spine specialist in, in individual cases um, so most important thing about cervical spondylosis what we have to understand is that this is a very common condition it is an inevitable problem 
many of the adults, many of the elderly population do have cervical spondylosis. These are natural age related changes, but as long as the symptoms are kept under control, so nothing major needs to be worried or these cases do not require or do not end up in a surgical intervention in majority of the cases.